quadratic inequalities. So to solve a quadratic inequality, we need to first ensure that our equation is rearranged so that one side of the equation is equal to zero. And then what we need to do is go and find these uh, critical values. Uh, and these are the critical values are uh, when y equals to zero, i.e. the solutions if it were an equation. So replacing the inequality with an equation. Then we would definitely need to sketch the graph of this quadratic function and then use our sketch to find the set of values. So very important, the third and fourth point here, sketching and then using the sketch to determine the set of values. So let's take a look at the application of this to this particular example here. So find the set of values of x for which 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared. So let's look at part A of this question here first. So first point we need to address is ensure that one side is equal to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this. I'm going to keep the x squared where it is, coefficient of x squared to be positive, and minus 4x on both sides and minus 12 on both sides. This gives us this inequality, quadratic inequality. Now I'm going to go and determine the critical values. So the critical values are determined by treating this as an equation, so zero equals to x squared minus 4x minus 12. And we're going to factorize this. And when we factorize this, we can say it's x minus 6 and x plus 2 are the factors. And from here, we can determine what those critical values are for x. x is equal to 6 and x is equal to minus 2. So we've determined our critical values. We now need to go ahead and sketch this. So sketching this on the axes, we've got 6 and minus 2. So let's put minus 2 and 6. It's an x squared with a coefficient of x squared being positive. So it's a positive as x approaches infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And we are, can now then look at using the sketch to determine the correct set of values of x. So we've sketched it, point three. Now let's take a look at the inequality. We're looking at where the function is less than zero. So we're looking at the part of the curve that is less than zero. Look at the, uh, our curve, where it's less than zero, where the output is less than zero is this part here. So what are the x values for this bit here? So the x values are ranging from minus two all the way to six. So we could then write this down as x being less than six and greater than minus two. Our inequality sign is not equal to because the original inequality said x squared minus 4x minus 12 is less than zero. So this is the final solution to that. Let's go and take a look at applying this to the second example here, part B. So we have 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared. So hence find the set of values for which 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared and keyword and which we look at where 5x minus 3 is greater than 2. Now we've already solved this bit here in part A. As you can see it's the same thing. So the solution to that is x is less than 6 and x is greater than minus 2. Let's go ahead and solve this new inequality here that we've got 5x minus 3 is greater than 2. It's a linear inequality so we can solve this quite easily. 5x is greater than 5 so x is greater than 1. So we need to go and find the solutions which satisfy this and satisfy this. In order to do this, the best thing to do is represent each of these solutions on the same number line. So we want to first of all represent this solution here. It goes from minus two all the way to six. Represented on the number line. And we want to also show where x is greater than 1 is on the number line. So 1 is somewhere between minus 2 and 6. doesn't matter where. Let's just put it in there. And we're looking for when, when this is greater than 1. x is greater than 1 is everything like that. Now we want the set of values that satisfy both. That's what the word and means. And means where it satisfies both inequalities. Satisfies both sets of values of x. So the 
values that satisfy both, as we can see here, are these values here. From there to there, it fits both of them, i.e. where the overlap is. So then go ahead and write our final solution. Well, the solution is everything less than six and everything greater than one. X is less than six and X is greater than one. So this is our solution that satisfies both inequalities. Here's a second example of solving uh, another inequality. Now, one thing to be mindful here is that when we are solving this, we need to multiply both sides by x, but we don't know whether x is positive or negative. Now, we know when we multiply by a negative value that we switch the inequality sign around. But since we don't know whether x is going to be positive or negative, we don't know whether we need to switch or not. Uh, one way to overcome this is by, first of all, squaring both sides. If you square both sides, whenever you square something, you will always end up with a positive value. So you'll end up with a square number, which is positive. So you'll end up with 36 over x squared is greater than 4. So what we've done is we've set up an equivalent inequality, where now we have the denominator x squared being positive because it's a square number, x squared. So now we can multiply both sides by x squared, resulting in 36 is greater than 4x squared. The inequality sign does not change because we know we've multiplied by a positive number, x squared being that positive number because it's a square number. And that's how we overcome when we are trying to multiply something by x. And if we don't know whether it's plus or minus, start by squaring both sides. So now we can go ahead and start solving this again. Make it uh, one side zero. So we've got zero is greater than 4x squared minus 36. So we've got our inequality. Let's go and find the critical values. It's a quadratic, as we can see here. Critical values, zero is equal to 4x squared minus 36. We can divide both sides by four. So we end up with zero is equal to x squared minus nine. And this we can then factorize x plus three and x minus three. And so our critical values are x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 3. Let's draw our sketch. Put the critical values down, minus 3, 3. It's a positive quadratic. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. Give me, give me two minutes. I'm recording in the middle, OK? So we've drawn the sketch, critical values. Now we need to use a sketch to determine the solutions. So let's go back to the inequality. The inequality states that find the region where 4x squared minus 36 is less than zero. Where it's less than zero is where it's the output is less than zero, where it's below the x-axis, this part here. So we've highlighted this part. Let's go and find out what the solutions here. The x values here are between three and minus three. So x is less than three, x is greater than minus three. So this is the set of solution for this inequality. Here we've got uh, curves already given to us. The line one represents uh, the equation y equals 12 plus 4x, and line two is of the equation y equals x squared, both as we can see here on the sketch. And what we need to determine is the point P1 and P2. Now we can see where P1 and P2 are. They are essentially the intersection of these two curves. Now we always find intersections. Whenever we see the word intersection, we should kind of be thinking here, okay, we're looking to see where these curves are equaling to each other. So we're looking to do simultaneous, use simultaneous equations to solve this. So we can find this by saying, okay, at those points P1 and P2, the Y values must be the same. So we can then say 12 plus 4X, which is the y value of line L1, must be equal to the y value of line L2, which is equal to x squared. So we have a quadratic here. Get one side to zero, so minus 4x minus 12. It's not quadratic. Let's go and factorize this. So we've got x minus 6, x plus 2. 
So from here, we can find out that x is equal to 6 or x is equal to minus 2. And when x is equal to minus 2, we can go and find out what the y values there is. So when x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to 12 plus 4 lots of minus 2. So that's 12 minus 8, which is 4. So minus 2, 4 is one solution or one point of intersection. And the second one is when y is equal to 12 plus 4 lots of 6. 4 lots of 6 is 24. 12 minus 24 is minus 12. So it's 6 minus 12 is another point of intersection. Which one is which? Well, let's take a look here. Uh, this one here is when x is positive 6, so this must be point P1, and this must be point P2 when x is negative minus 2. So we found the points of intersection. Then it goes on to say, hence write down the solution to the inequality of 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared. Well, let's take a look at this and understand this. We don't need to do any solving here. What we need to determine is 12 plus 4x is, remember, the straight line. And x squared here is the x squared curve. So we're looking for the region on the graph where 12 plus 4x is greater than x squared, i.e. where is 12 plus 4x? When is this? When is this 12 plus 4x bit greater, meaning higher or above x squared? So 12 plus 4x is the line. So where is the line L1 above the line L2? Well, go and take a look at the sketch. Where is that region? Let's go and identify that. Let's go and highlight that. So where is L1 above L2? Where is the curve L1 above the curve L2? So L1 is above the curve L2 for this region. So for that region, we can see the line L1 is above L2. For the other bits here, we can see this bit is not right because here the line L1 is below the red line, the L2. And likewise here as well, the line is below the, the red line. So the only part that we are looking at that satisfies this inequality is there. So we then just simply need to determine what the x values are for that particular shaded region, highlighted region in green. So what are the solutions to that? Well, let's take a look at it. It's between the values, x values of P1 and P2. So we, what is the x values of P1 and P2? Well, P1 has an x value of minus two. Sorry, P1 has an x value of six. And P2 has an x value of minus 2. So we're looking at when x is less than 6 and when x is greater than minus 2. That's the answer to that bit.